everybody. Um, it's time for our next session, which is probably to me the most interesting part of this entire conference, uh, what we like to call governance stories. I think two of the key things that came out of the uh, distinguished opening panel that we had this morning is one that the threats that we're experiencing today are they're quite exponential and they have new forms that we haven't seen before and therefore completely new models of governance, the kind that the disarmament and the weapons sector has not seen before, need to come out. Um, and secondly, we spoke about the changing nature of public accountability. I think that was another very interesting thing to touch on. Um, states no longer are the custodians either fully of the blame of uh, the use of weapons, nor are they the custodians uh, in the traditional multilateral setup of the the solutions to combat this problem. Um, and so what, what the panel, I think, very clearly laid out is that there are lessons in weapons governance uh, and dividends in it for the, the entire host of our uh, catastrophic risks that multilateralism has to deal with now, whether it is in implementing the sustainable development goals or disaster risk reduction, uh, improving peace building and peacekeeping, even operationalizing trade in sensitive materials. Um, but more importantly, and this is one of the big objectives conference and of this session specifically is that there are lessons for a complex challenge like weapons governance in other sectors of governance. Um, so for example, the biological and chemical weapons conventions have quite a broad definition of what a weapon is and any agent that is weaponized, to put it crudely, uh, could be considered a weapon. So lessons from industry are critical. On potential weapons that are not covered by our conventional uh, regimes, the most important lessons can, be, then can come from something unexpected like climate, gov climate governance or um, data mining or, or our experience in responding to pandemics uh, for that matter. And it also alerts us to what are the different areas in which we need to go. As we said in the very beginning, this is not a disarmament conference. This is about weapons governance and a whole host of issues like how do you contain fallout? How do we work with non-security networks to operationalize this conversation? And how do we get stakeholders across to reimagine themselves as having a in it? Um, so today we have seven governance stories, leaders from fields that are very different from the traditional arms and security sectors who will make presentations here on some of the very effective models they're working with. Um, at the end of the first batch, we will get together for a discussion. We will have them all up on stage and we will have a Q&A with the audience. Before we start, you all know by now how Mentimeter works because we used it to get your views on the small group discussions. Now, if you could go back um, to menti.com at the end of our, all our conversations, and we're going to get a sense from the room uh, on how closely you thought the models that you heard today could impact and how closely they were linked immediately to the questions of weapons governance. So without further delay, um, I'm going to request our first speaker. Um, before that, let me remind all the speakers you have between uh, 10 to 12 minutes to wrap up your speeches. I have been informed by the organizers that there will be consequences if you don't do that. I didn't ask them what, but we all know they're experts in weaponry, so. Um, our first speaker for the day, Mr. Harjeet Singh, who is the Global Climate Lead for Action Aid, um, and he's going to be speaking to us about civic and private sector stakeholders' roles at various levels of climate governance. Harjeet, the stage is yours. <laughs> 